Have you ever heard how celery is a miracle food? That it'll actually make you burn more calories than it provides simply by digesting it? Basically, this implies that you will burn calories every time you eat celery. If you have, well, we wanted to tell you absolutely none of that is true. However, people want to believe it is because everyone's looking for that superfood to help them burn their fat. While we don't have any foods that'll melt fat off your bones on their own, there are some that can definitely help your journey, backed by science. This video will go over the foods you definitely need to have in your diet. In order to lose weight, you basically need to burn more calories than you eat. We know it's a bit more complicated than that, but that is the gist of it. This means that we gain weight from eating. So how could eating help us lose weight? That's because not all foods are created equal. If you've ever heard the saying, a calorie is a calorie, or any other suggestion that all calories are equal, know that it is not true. We live in a time where everything about food has been broken down to a single variable. How many calories does it have? Of course, calories are extremely important when you're trying to burn fat. However, food is just more than calories, as you'll see. Different foods pack drastically different nutrients, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and other compounds, which can have a significant effect on your body. So while the actual calories of a food are technically the same, the rest of the food can be drastically different, which can have an effect on weight loss. And with that in mind, we're going to start with an extremely important compound that is often looked over. While not technically food, this list would not be complete without mentioning water. So we're going to start with some good old H2O. Sure, it might be a boring food, but water can definitely help you lose weight. In fact, it can help you lose weight independent of diet and exercise. In other words, simply drinking more will help you shed the pounds. A study followed 173 premenopause women who were trying to lose weight for over a year. During this time, the women tracked their diet, water intake, fluid intake, and any exercise they performed. All of the data was then analyzed, so the researchers were able to specify the exact role that water played in any weight loss. The results showed that women who increased their water intake to just over 1 liter of water saw 2 kilograms of fat loss as a result. So to be clear, this 2 kilos of weight loss came solely from drinking water and was in addition to any weight loss from diet or other exercise. What's even more amazing is that similar results occurred in other studies as well. It's thought to be due to water requiring an increase in thermogenesis. It's estimated that every half liter drank will burn 23 calories. Over the course of a year, this could add up considerably, especially when you consider all you need to do is drink water. However, there's more than one mechanism in drinking water that's believed to aid in fat loss. That is largely the satiety effect of water. That means that drinking water will help keep you feeling full and fight off cravings. Helping you fight off cravings and limiting your calorie intake is likely an even greater effect than the rise in metabolism, at least if you drink it at the right time. When is the right time? Let's look at what science says. A study followed a group of overweight participants who were trying to lose weight. Two groups were created during the study, with the only difference being that one group drank a glass of water before each meal. Other than that, everything else was equivalent. What kind of difference could a glass of water before your meal make? Pretty massive, as they lost a staggering 44% more weight than those who didn't. This might just be the easiest food on this list to incorporate into your daily diet. So, now that you got your hydration down, let's get to your first food. Well, at least a group of food. For the next foods, we have one that's a little spicy. We're talking about cayenne peppers. Well, we're actually talking about capsaicin, which is the active ingredient in peppers that makes your mouth burn. However, capsaicin supplements are usually made from cayenne peppers, which is why there's a close association. So, as we were saying, if you've ever wondered why capsaicin burns, it's because it's actually a chemical irritant and a neurotoxin for humans to consume. That makes sense now. If you've ever stopped eating food because it was too spicy, well, the capsaicin's job was a success. But how does an irritant help lose fat anyway? It's probably in a similar manner as you're thinking. When you consume capsaicin, it triggers your TRPV1 receptor, which then releases heat into your body. This then leads to a higher caloric burn, approximately 50 calories a day. While there aren't a ton of studies on capsaicin's effects on weight loss, there are enough for there to be a meta-analysis. Published in 2023, this meta-analysis compares all of the studies on capsaicin's fat-burning effects. In total, 15 studies met the requirements put forth by the researchers and were included in the study. After full analysis, they discovered that capsaicin may have rather modest effects in reducing BMI, BW, and WC for overweight or obese individuals. At the same time, there's evidence that capsaicin can actually curb your appetite. We know that when we eat spicy food, our urge to eat is shrunk. Because it hurts. If you're sensitive to capsaicin, it'll likely reduce your appetite as well. 
and if it does, this can result in a significant account for an untold amount of calories. So how much should you eat? Well, we can't say for sure. However, we do know of one fat loss study which had participants eat 6 milligrams a day for 12 weeks. This dose led to significant amounts of fat loss, so that seems like a good spot to start. So now let's rewind to the beginning of the video where we opened the video with the story of celery. We also said none of it was true. In reality, there is some truth in the gist of the explanation and it all has to do with something that's called the thermal effect of food, or TEF for short. To understand TEF, we have to realize our bodies use energy to fuel every single process that occurs. This includes things such as respiration and our brain processing information. It also includes digestion. Like in the celery story, TEF is the amount of calories that's required to digest food, transport nutrients, and excrete it. So again, there are three macronutrients in our diets and all three have different levels of TEF. One of them is significantly higher than the other two. The macro with the lowest TEF is going to be fat. Fat is a highly concentrated form of energy, already broken down to its simplest components. Therefore, when you eat foods high in fat, it's very easy for your body to break it down. Ultimately, this means you aren't going to use a lot of energy to process it. Therefore, it has a TEF of 0 to 1%. That means if you ate 100 calories of fat, you only burn 1% of it to process it. The middle macro is carbohydrates. We can think of some carbohydrates such as fruit, rice, and oatmeal. They're a bit more solid and will require a bit more energy to break down. Therefore, carbohydrates have a TEF of around 10%. Again, eating 100 calories of carbohydrates would require 10 calories to process it. And then we have protein. Steak, chicken, pork, and other animal products. These foods are a bit tougher, so they require significantly more energy to break down. Therefore, protein has a TEF of 20 to 30%. Plant-based protein sources like legumes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains also contribute to the thermic effect of food, or TEF, but their TEF is generally lower than for animal-based proteins, ranging from 10 to 20%. Dr. Jose Antonio performed a famous study to examine the effects of an ultra-high-protein diet. He found that even though the high-protein group ate 800 calories more, they didn't gain any fat. While we're on protein, we need to discuss another benefit. We just talked about how protein is going to take the longer to digest. Well, this also means that it'll keep you feeling full for longer. In this manner, it can help curb appetites naturally. For these reasons, high-protein diets have been consistently found to be effective in weight loss studies. So what type of protein should you eat? In reality, any high-protein food will have this effect. However, eggs seem to pop up a lot in research. Eggs are consistently used in studies to show the weight loss benefits of high-protein diets. For example, a study from 2020 showed that simply adding eggs to breakfast resulted in an overall decrease of total calories, which ultimately meant more weight loss. Yogurt is another protein source that's actually been used in studies to promote weight loss. However, as we mentioned, any high-protein food would presumably work. For example, a study pitted lean beef against chicken as the main source of protein in the two groups of participants losing weight. After 12 weeks, both groups lost a significant amount of fat. However, there was no difference between the groups. In other words, they both lost similar amounts of weight. Next on the list are diets high in fiber, particularly soluble fiber. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that your body cannot fully digest. In fact, there are two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. Insoluble fiber does not break down in water and is responsible for adding bulk to your stool. This helps digestive health and can keep you regular. On the other hand, soluble fiber does dissolve in water. This creates a gel-like substance which can sit and fill up your stomach, making you feel full. In addition to filling you up, researchers have found that high-fiber diets may also help decrease weight through another mechanism, improving your gut flora. For example, different individuals will start with a different situation going on in their guts, some more ideal than others. Researchers have found that a high-fiber diet results in a greater overall improvement in those with a less-than-ideal gut. As a result, they tend to lose more weight. So what are some great high-fiber foods? Well, oats are a standout. Studies have constantly been found to have a positive effect on your weight, either to lose weight or with weight management. Oats is a type of soluble fiber, meaning it helps fill up your stomach. However, oats also have other weight loss benefits. One major benefit is the improvement of appetite hormones leptin and ghrelin. Oats can raise leptin, which encourages you to stop eating, while decreasing ghrelin, which usually increases appetite. Better yet, combine a high-fiber diet with a high-protein diet. Both of these increase satiety and fullness, so it can act as a double-edged sword in your fight against fat. 
What's interesting is that these two tactics can work so well that often followers of the diet don't even need to count calories. For example, a 2018 study had 34 participants follow a 12-week diet in which the only variable was to increase fiber intake and increase lean protein. Specifically, fiber was increased to more than 35 grams per day, while protein was increased to over 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Again, even though there was no controlling of calories, participants still ate 265 calories less per day on average. We should note that 0.8 grams per kilogram is actually still a low amount of protein. This simply means that their protein levels were very low before the diet. Regardless, both of these diets, independently and combined, have seen consistent success in helping drop weight. Another group of foods that's shown to aid fat loss is a form of carbohydrate known as resistant starch. Starch is a complex carbohydrate called a polysaccharide, which is composed of a long chain of glucose molecules. It's commonly found in many vegetables and is especially connected to potatoes and rice. Now, resistant starch is a unique type of starch which, similar to fiber, passes through the small intestine undigested and reaches the colon intact. Once in the colon, it's fermented and feeds your gut flora. Again, this is similar to fiber, which can increase fat loss specifically because it improves your gut. At the same time, resistant starch has fewer calories than normal starch and other carbohydrates, 2 calories per gram versus 4. This allows you to eat more, yet fewer calories, which decreases total caloric intake while increasing satiety. There are several common foods which contain resistant starch, such as cashews, raw oats, and green bananas. One of the more common sources is a bit of a hack. You can cook potatoes and let them cool before you eat. This heating and cooling process causes an alteration which produces resistant starch. For the next food, we're going to give you another liquid to drink to wash down all that protein and resistant starch. Green tea. Green tea is an immensely popular beverage in the East and is slowly gaining traction in the West. Not only do drinkers enjoy the taste, there's one very special ingredient that can make it a great tool to fight excess weight gain. Caffeine. Caffeine is the world's most popular stimulant and has proven to be a powerful tool for fat burning. Due to its stimulating effects, it's been suggested that caffeine can increase our metabolism. Again, our metabolism refers to a group of systems that dictate how many calories we burn on a daily basis. When consumed on a daily basis, it's estimated that green tea can burn up to an extra 100 calories per day. That's a lot for simply changing your hydration source. In addition to burning calories, several other health benefits have been attached to green tea. Perhaps the most significant is that green tea is full of catechins. Catechins are a group of flavonoids which hold high antioxidant properties. In fact, catechins are believed to be such powerful antioxidants that they're said to be effective in actually preventing various cancers such as lung cancer, breast cancer, esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, and prostate cancer. The rate of suggested consumption needs considerable research, but 3-5 to five cups per day is a common suggestion. In addition to foods that you should eat to lose fat, we wanted to also give you a few bonuses, some foods you shouldn't eat. The first group of foods is going to be high caloric liquids. As mentioned above, one of the variables that affects a food's ability to lose weight is its satiety rate, how full it makes you. Unfortunately, liquid is minimal relative to its total calories. This is one of the reasons it's advised not to drink fruit juice. When you do, you consume all the sugar and calories but don't get any of the nutrients from the meat of the fruit nor the satiety effects. Studies have actually shown that when caloric yielding liquids are consumed with meals instead of water, it greatly increases the risk of eating in a surplus. So you now know what food should be seen in your diet? Here are some tips to integrate it into your diet. As we mentioned in the middle of the video, perhaps the most influential change to your diet should be to increase your protein. When losing weight, you should eat at least 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. A couple of studies have shown that eating even a higher amount could result in more weight loss. If you're not used to eating higher amounts of protein, you'll likely be surprised at how much just 2 grams per kilogram is, and you'll likely find you become very full very fast. However, as you continue, you can adjust as necessary. In terms of fiber, men should try to eat at least 35 grams per day, while women should aim to eat at least 25 grams per day. Also, be sure to include some resistant starch in your diet. Raw oats, green bananas, cashews, or cooled potatoes work great. You can find some recipes for these foods to put into your daily food. And with all that food, don't forget to hydrate throughout the day as well. Remember how big of an impact drinking plenty of water daily can have on your body composition. In order to drink the correct amount, we're also going to suggest drinking green tea. 
Further, we'll include the tip on what not to eat, or more specifically what not to drink, basically any fluid with calories. So daily, you should drink at least 64 fluid ounces of liquid. Your other fluid will come through the food you eat. However, everyone is different and requires a different amount, so start with that number and you can make alterations as necessary. Earlier we said that to get the most out of your green tea, you could try drinking 3 to 5 cups per day, which equals 24 to 40 ounces. That takes up a large chunk of your daily hydration, which should then be filled up with water, another 24 to 40 ounces. However, keep in mind that number is used for all individuals, therefore if you exercise, this will likely be much more. If that's you, keep your green tea consumption the same and increase your total hydration with water. Other than water or green tea, milk would be another acceptable liquid. Even though it is liquid, it is a thicker consistency and it packs a ton of nutrition. Further, an extra bonus, milk has been shown to be an awesome hydrator, perhaps better than water or even a sports drink. At the same time, be sure to drink a cup of water before every meal. Remember, this can make a huge dent in your total calories consumed. And if you're trying to add some flavor to your foods, be sure to use capsaicin in your recipes. Again, 6 mg a day is a good number to start with and go from there. So, we went over the foods to include in your diet to help you lose weight. However, while some of them can be highly effective, none of them come close to the magical celery that's talked about so much. In other words, none of these foods or food tips will completely mitigate the need to watch your caloric intake. Your fat loss will still come from getting into a caloric deficit and upping your activity level. These foods may just make that that much easier to do.